Okay, hi booktube, Aaron here, hope you're doing alright. Today I'm going to be doing a tag, it's the Contradictions book tag which was created by Daniela from Only If For A Page and I was very kindly tagged by Fraser Simons from Springboard Thought. Uh, both videos will be down in, des in the description, um, so I'll have them down there. Um, and yeah, this is a fun little tag um, and um, yeah, it kind of really gets you thinking I feel like it's been a while since um, I've done a tag where it's, um, you know, it gives you a certain, I don't know, situation or um, a certain sort of category and you have to find a book to kind of fit it. Um, and although those books, uh, those kind of tags can seem a bit repetitive sometimes, sometimes it's nice to, to do them and to um, really think about uh, how the books that you have on your shelves really fit in. Uh, to, the, to the way you see your, your larger collection of books or your, your larger uh, reading tastes, things like that. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense, but, you know, sometimes it's nice just to, to re-evaluate your books and to think about how you feel about them, I suppose is what I'm trying to say. Um, and with this one, um, I should probably say at the very beginning, there's actually a lot of poetry in the books that I'm going to be talking about. Uh, just because of this book, uh, with this book tag, it's kind of talking a lot about uh, opinions about of books and how maybe those opinions could change, uh, whether it's opinions about a certain author from book to book, um, or you know how your opinions about a book might change, or sort of things like that come up a bit. Um, and I feel like with with poetry, there's a little more room. Um, yeah, there's much more room for that to happen for your opinions to change, as really the the work that you're evaluating isn't necessarily a whole book, but you're, you're taking it from poem to poem. Um, so I, I feel like a poet, you're given a bit more space to think about um, your, your feelings towards them, uh, rather than with, with a novelist when you're waiting towards the end of a novel or with a short story writer or something. Um, at least that's kind of how I was feeling today as I was, I was putting my answers together. So just as a heads up, there's a lot of poetry in here today. Um, but yeah, let's stop rambling and get into the tag. So the, the first prompt is, I love this genre, but I didn't like this book. Um, and for the first sort of area of poetry here today, I'm going with sort of strange, almost esoteric poetry. Um, it's maybe a little experimental. You know, I, I quite like poetry that at least pushes the boundary a little bit and is exploring um, areas of life which aren't necessarily the mundane and everyday although I do appreciate that as well. Um, but yeah, the po poems that feel like they're just sort of pushing the envelope a bit and going into realms of life that aren't really explored that much. And um, yeah, I love that in a poem, but there are a couple of, of, of books of poetry that I have here that I feel went a little too far in this regard. Um, and the first example is a book that I read about a year ago, and it's called States of the Body Produced by Love by Nisha Ramaya. Um, and um, it, yeah, it's a really interesting book looking into um, a lot of like Hindu mythology and, and story um, and the uh, uh, Anisha Ramaya's own relationship to learning Sanskrit and, and stuff like that. Um, but, but really it's, it's, a, it's a collection that uh, it really did get me scratching my head um, and although it was interesting, I just didn't really love it that much, the, the work itself wasn't necessarily infectious for me as a reader as, as I was going through it, um, but um, it's still interesting. And again, very similar will be a book I, I have only just finished really, which is The Anaphimata by David Jones, um, which again is, is really working more of a, more of a sort of Catholic tradition and is, is, is kind of looking at British history and bringing more of world history in as well. Um, and really trying to understand ritual and the words around rituals. Um, but again, it, it, it kind of gets lost in the footnotes a little bit. Um, and so, um, although it's interesting, I didn't really love it that much. Then number two is, I rarely read this genre, but I loved this book. And for me, I, I don't really know exactly what genre I put it into, but I know that I haven't read too many books that... Um, sort of feel similar to this book um, and uh, this book is The Blue Castle by Ella Montgomery who's probably more you know better known for uh, Anne of Green Gables 
Um, so I don't, I don't know whether you put this in, in the category of romance or sort of a lighter romance, I, I don't really know. Um, but it was different to my, my usual uh, reading palette. Um, but I still really loved it. And it got me thinking that uh, the genres that I don't read, it's not necessarily because I don't like the genre, it's just because there are other things that interest me more. Um, and so having an experience in a sort of a direction that I don't usually take, um, you know, got me thinking that there are plenty of possibilities out there for my reading. Um, and um, yeah, maybe it'd be nice every now and then to go off in a different direction. Number three is I love this trope, but I didn't like this book. I'm not sure if this is really a trope or maybe more of a, a movement or a style, um, but I'm always drawn towards the surreal. I love surrealism, maybe more in art and film, um, and it definitely works in poetry. I recently read, or about six months ago, I read an, an anthology of uh, of surrealist poetry. Um, and um, I'm always interested to see how it plays out in fiction. Uh, and so far, I'm a little on the fence as to how it could work in fiction. Um, and then this was a, a surrealist uh, novel or sort of short novel by Leonora Carrington, who was a great surrealist painter uh, called The Hearing Trumpet. Um, and for me, it just didn't quite pay off how, was, how you know, just quite how I was hoping it would pay off. Um, and, and maybe if I reread this, I'd find more to appreciate in it um, and I definitely hope I'd yeah I definitely hope to read more by Carrington and um, yeah sort of find something I really love because I, I love her painting and just as a, a figure in 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 art history and in, in literary history she's really fascinating uh, but I, I didn't necessarily love this book as much as I was hoping to then on to number four which is I hate this trope I loved this book um, and, and the trope I, I thought to go to, because I, I found it quite hard to find a trope I didn't like. <laughs> it took me a, a bit of head scratching to, to get to this point. Um, but I was really thinking of the kind of YA and sort of teenage um, trope of just having a, a teenage character who saves the world, often in maybe a, um, a dystopian setting. And I'm, I'm sure you can think of loads and loads of books that kind of follow that trend. Uh, I just find it a bit, um, well, well, on one side it's a little unrealistic I suppose and on the other side um, it just reminds me of being a teenager and reading all these books that were trying so hard uh, to be relatable and, and, and to make the characters uh, relatable to me as a teenager um, and I found that they were trying so hard to do that that it was almost getting in the way of the story and, and the book itself. Um, but then, after a while, I was reading more stuff, and as I got older, I was reading back to some books that fit into that category. Uh, and, and one kind of world, one sort of series of books that I, I really loved that would fit into this would be the Mortal Engines series by Philip Reeve. Um, and I, I really love these books. There are, there are four books uh, in this series. Um, and, um, yeah, but they're not as widely read as certainly other books that would fit into, into that category. I'm sure you have no trouble <laughs> thinking of those books. Uh, but th these are really great books. I think they're, um, yeah, they should be more widely read. And the sort of prequel series to these, the uh, Fever Crumb series, I think there are three books in this series, um, are also quite fun. Not quite as good, but still quite fun. Okay, and then on to number five, which is, I love this author, but I didn't love this book. And again, we're back to poetry. Um, and this is uh, a book called Kid by Simon Armitage. Um, and th there are loads of, um, yeah, sort of, there are a few standout poems in here and some sort of classic Simon Armitage poems in here. There's one called, um, let's see. So there's a, there's a poem here called About His Person, which is really good. A poem here called The Catch, which is really good. Um, I've read a, a more recent Simon Armitage collection called The Unaccompanied, which I enjoyed much more. I've read his selected poems, um, sort of tracing his career so far. Um, and as a sweep of career of his career, I really loved that. Um, but although there are a few standout poems in here, as a, as a collection, I thought it fell flat a little bit. Um, it just got a bit samey, um, which was a shame because I really like a lot of, you know, a lot of his work. 
Um, so that'll be one from an author that I enjoy, but I just didn't enjoy this book that much. And then number six is I previously disliked a book by this author, but I loved this book. And again, we're going into, into poetry and it's not necessarily a, necessarily a book by this author, uh, but just the way I saw this author's work as a whole. Um, and I was thinking of uh, W.H. Auden um, and at least a lot of the more famous poems by Auden, like um, if you know Blues and um, As I Walked Out One Evening and a lot of his sort of lighter verse, I suppose, it's m more popular. Um, and although now I actually really love those poems, um, a few years ago, um, I, I, yeah, I just saw him as a writer of light verse and I didn't really take him that seriously and I didn't really think he was a, a poet worth reading to be you know frankly honest um, but but now I've yeah sort of really come around to I mean I've, I've read some of uh, some of his earlier stuff which is much stranger and harder to um, to get a sense of um, and then going through that and into his lighter stuff um, and actually realizing that actually the, the, the language in those poems is really beautiful um, and that he really knew what he was doing um, has really made me reevaluate his work as a whole. Um, and I really want to get much deeper into Auden's poetry. Um, so it's not necessarily a book that I disliked and then another book that changed my mind, um, but just how my thoughts on Auden have changed over time. And I'm kind of hoping if we're going back to, um, going back to Leonora Carrington, um, I'm kind of hoping that, um, you know, something will come along that would help me reevaluate her writing um, because there's something about her that I still love and then, I don't know, a kind of mischievous and mysterious elements to her that um, I find fascinating. Um, so I'm hoping that a book will come along that will um, help me reevaluate her writing. Um, and then on to number seven. So I love this cover, but I didn't love this book. Um, and yeah, I do really like this cover. This is Grief is the Thing with Feathers. And just the visual element of the whole of this book, I think is really great. Um, and it's not to say that I, I hated this book by, by any stretch, um, but yeah, I don't know, the, just the, the way this looks is much cooler <laughs> than the actual, uh, the actual writing itself, I think. Um, and then I didn't like this cover, but I loved this book. And I found this one of the hardest prompts uh, to, to answer, mainly because if I really don't like a cover, I rarely actually buy the book. <laughs> um, so it was quite hard to, uh, yeah, to, to actually find a book that came into this. And, and the closest I could find, again, it's more poetry. Um, I have this sort of every man's poetry edition of Samuel Taylor Coleridge's poems. And I don't, I don't think I've actually read this cover to cover. Um, and eventually, I just sort of gave up on this and bought myself <laughs> another edition of of Coleridge's poetry, which I have read cover to cover. Um, and so, yeah, I've I found that if I don't really like the cover, it might actually stop me from reading the book. And I'll just buy an edition that I prefer. Um, so, um, yeah, that's the closest I could find for that. And then the ninth, uh, the ninth prompt then is to tag someone. Um, and I'm just going to go with the usual cop-out and tag anyone who hasn't done this yet. And if you'd like to do it, go ahead and do the tag. I'd like to see more people doing this tag. Uh, but there we go. That's the that's the end of this video. I hope you hope you enjoyed it and found something interesting in there. Um, so, um, yeah, that's the end for now. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.